Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Ubuntu, as one of the major distros out there, still carries on with its 6 month release schedule. And as we're moving through April, here is version 19.04, codenamed Disco Dingo. Let's take a look at what's new. The desktop. First thing you'll notice is the new desktop wallpaper. It looks kinda weird in a neon Tron-like style, but I like it. It reminds me of Amarok, that old Swiss army knife of a music player. The Yaru theme itself seems mostly unchanged, with the same classy look and feel, and a good mix of colors from orange to green with a bit of dark mode here and there. I found that the default Ubuntu theme is now modern and usable, and is, in my opinion, one of the best there is out there. Of course, this is subjective, and the orange might not fit everyone's tastes. Ubuntu 19.04 bases itself on GNOME 3.32, with the Dash to Dock extension by default. They then benefit from the performance improvements in GNOME Shell, which should make animations a lot more reactive and smooth, and fractional scaling can still be applied in Wayland sessions if you enable the deconf setting. Ubuntu also benefits from the app permission control for Flatpak apps. In GNOME software, you can check which permissions a Flatpak app will ask for before installing it, and a new Applications Preference panel in the settings allows you to control these and change them if any of these are user-modifiable. Non-Flatpak apps also get their own page, listing the file types they can open, their access to notifications, and the total size they take up on disk. This is a good feature all in all, and Ubuntu should definitely work to include their Snap applications in the same settings panel. Since Ubuntu doesn't ship with Flatpak enabled by default, you'll have to install it manually and add the Flathub repo if you want. The terminal now uses header bars, which is nice if you like them, which I do, although Yaru's handling of tabs don't really seem to mesh well with this new header bar. Ubuntu also benefits from other GNOME 3.32 improvements, such as emoji being included in the on-screen keyboard, improved and more legible sound settings, and more options to tweak how nightlight works, such as selecting the color temperature manually. On other notes, the app menus are going away progressively, so you won't get many options in the little menu on the top panel, and this panel won't be transparent anymore, it will always be opaque by default. I'll invite you to check out my video on GNOME 3.32 once you're done with this one, if you want the whole rundown of new features. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Finally, Ubuntu now ships with the desktop icons extension by default. This is great for people who want to use that feature, and while I personally never liked having icons on my desktop, it finally allows Ubuntu to use the latest version of Nautilus, which is a very good thing. This extension is not yet on par with the old desktop icons feature though, since it doesn't support dragging icons to and from the desktop. This will probably be added in a later iteration, and that's still a good step for users who need this feature. Disco Dingo was also stated to release with the GS Connect extension by default, which enables users of the KDE Connect mobile app to better pair their Android phone and their desktop or laptop running GNOME, but it has been postponed. Under the hood Ubuntu 19.04 ships with the Linux kernel version 5.0. As always, it should guarantee better hardware support and additional performance improvements. It mainly adds support for AMD FreeSync and the newer Vega M cards, as well as improved power management. Disco Dingo also uses Mesa 19, so AMD users should have the latest graphics stack by default and have as good an experience as possible on this version. At installation, NVIDIA users should also be pretty happy. The option to install third-party drivers now includes proprietary NVIDIA drivers, which will be picked depending on your graphics card's model. This will definitely save some time and make using the distro easier out of the box. Ubuntu's Live Patch service is also more easily accessible to desktop users. Live Patch is an Ubuntu feature that allows you to update the kernel without rebooting. While it's mainly useful for servers to avoid downtime, desktop users can enjoy it as well. Head to the Software and Updates app and you'll get a Live Patch tab where you can enable the option. In terms of applications, Disco Dingo ships Firefox 66, Thunderbird 60.6, Rhythmbox 3.4.3 and LibreOffice 6.2.2 so you'll get the latest and greatest from each application. Ubuntu still ships some of its default applications as Snap, such as the System Monitor and the Calculator. And while it's okay for them to promote their own packaging system, I think using it for these specific applications, which are pretty simple and don't require frequent updates, is kinda dumb. Snaps still have a lot of performance issues, especially at first startup, and I don't think it really adds anything to the experience to ship these as Snap packages. Variants as always, Ubuntu comes in a lot of different variants, or flavors, for those who do not want to use GNOME. 
You'll find Kubuntu 19.04, which comes with KDE 5.15 and the KDE apps 18.12.3, or Ubuntu Budgie 19.04, which is kind of the best distribution to use this desktop environment, apart from Solus. Ubuntu Mate should release on April 18th, and will stick to Mate 1.20 out of the box. 1.22 will land in Ubuntu Mate 19.10 in 6 months, since it has a few API changes that might break third-party applications. Other variants include Lubuntu with LXQT and Xubuntu with XFCE, but changes seem scarce on these specific desktop environments, which don't have as many contributors as GNOME and KDE. Finally, Ubuntu Studio 19.04 will also be released on April 18th, with a new installer for optional features, as well as the addition of Carla 2.0, which is a plugin bridge allowing Windows audio plugins to run on Ubuntu Studio. New icon and GTK themes are also included to modernize the look and feel, and the Disco Dingo wallpaper has been tweaked to look more in line with Ubuntu Studio's look. I must say, it looks gorgeous. Ubuntu Studio can now also be installed on top of another Ubuntu flavor, so if you realize you need its specific features, such as the real-time kernel or its comprehensive audio, video and image creation tools, it's an easy install. And that's about it. Ubuntu Disco Dingo is not a feature-packed release although it is, as always, a solid one. The very good performance improvements in GNOME Shell that started in 3.30 now give a good experience with smooth animations and a stable frame rate. The permission control is a good step forward, although Ubuntu is not the best distro to take advantage of it since it doesn't ship with Flatpak by default. The return of desktop icons will please some users, even though the feature is not yet 100% complete and should also allow Ubuntu to move forward without patching older versions of Nautilus. If you are running 18.10, definitely upgrade. The newer kernel version and the various tweaks are worth it. If you were on an LTS release, you'll probably want to wait for the next one, 20.04 in a year. While Ubuntu might not be the purest GNOME experience out there, it is definitely one of the best, with an admittedly great looking theme and nice tweaks to improve the usability. Users that dislike GNOME can still install Unity from the repos or turn to one of the many flavors, such as Kubuntu, Ubuntu Mate or Ubuntu Budgie. At the time this video releases, Ubuntu Disco Dingo should be released and you'll be able to update directly to it if you were running 18.10. Users that are using Ubuntu LTS might want to stick to 18.04 since 19.04 is not a long-term support version. I hope you guys enjoyed this little review and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.